Hi everyone, my name is Dave and welcome to Extra Credit, a video series where we take an unscripted look at topics related to local history and exploring that history. So today's episode is all about load bearing. No, we're not building a house, but we are carrying things. And so we're going to be taking a look at the tools of the trade, what we're going to be using to explore parts of area history. Now, of course, this is my own opinion. And what you're going to see is basically three different levels of gear that I would carry with me or tools that I would use to carry that gear when I go off on my explorations. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is if you were going off on a short little hike or you're going somewhere where you're kind of not too far off the beaten path and you just need to be able to carry a few things. So you might want to bring something like this with you. So this is just basically a small little uh, fanny pack type setup. Okay, um, this is from a company called Low. Uh, I actually, I think I purchased this um, actually to carry some, some small camera gear um, with me. And so uh, it's just, again, it's a small little fanny pack. You can actually flip it around and probably wear it on the front as well. Uh, so it does have a little simple buckle-like attachment and basically adjustable little nylon belt. It does have little side pockets here, little mesh side pockets where you can sort of fit things into. Uh, and then on the front, uh, it essentially has an opening for a couple of water bottles. You can see that. Uh, and then it does have a zip enclosure here where you can put a few things into and then there is kind of like a, uh, a bungee cord uh, on the front where you can uh, attach various parts of gear or secure things to it. So normally I would wear this as if I, again, if I was going on a, on a little hike or a little exploration where I'm not kind of going too far, um, I may want to throw my, uh, my phone in there or throw my wallet, my keys, and maybe uh, bring along a water bottle or two. And so again, when you're out hiking, it's really gonna depend on where you're at and where you're planning to go to. So again, I would probably use this on a small little kind of exploration if I'm just going for, uh, for a little bit and I don't really need to carry too much gear. But again, it's very, very important that you be able to carry some stuff with you. Hydration is very important, so carrying water with you. Uh, and then obviously having uh, certain items with you. Um, uh, again, probably having your, in most areas where you have reception, having your cell phone with you. Um, probably bringing on maybe a few snacks and things like that. So um, this is probably level one, hiking level one for me when I'm out uh, in uh, the small little types of explorations. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna move on to level two. So if you're planning on maybe doing a, a little bit more of an intensive hike, maybe you're going somewhere where it's a little bit more off the beaten path, maybe you need to carry a few more things with you. And so you might want to kind of delve into a larger uh, type of uh, piece of equipment uh, to carry a little bit more gear. And so you would basically look at something like this. Uh, and so this is, uh, this is actually one of my kids' old ones. Uh, it's kind of a little bit beat up. It's got a few little, uh, little holes and types of things in there. Otherwise, it's in, it's in pretty good shape. Um, I don't do types of hikes where I'm, you know, carrying vital, very minimal amount of gear. A lot of my hikes are kind of off the beaten path. So I'm using this kind of periodically. Uh, I can just sort of think in my head of where I'm going to be using this in this coming year. So, for example, I'm going to be doing a, a hike uh, around Nipigon uh, along the railway line. And so I'm not going to be really kind of in a more remote area. I'm going to be going through, you know, part of a town. So I don't really need to carry a lot of stuff with me. And so this is probably, uh, for a lot of you, this is going to be the type of gear that you're going to bring with you. Um, so this one is uh, from the company Columbia. And again, this was, uh, this was actually belonged to uh, one of my kids and they would have used it as a school backpack for a number of years and then um, decided to, uh, to decided to change, to upgrade. And so um, essentially it's, it is kind of handy. Um, it, is, uh, it is one of these waterproof ones. I think it does have the, uh, um, it does have the little waterproof cover in underneath. So you can kind of flip that out and cover the backpack. Um, speaking of backpack, uh, Maybe before I get too far, I want to talk a little bit about terminology. So um, where I live in, so in um, at least 
Thunder Bay, or at least parts of Northwestern Ontario. Uh, the more common term that we use for this is a pack sack. Now, um, I know probably people in other areas um, might not have any idea what I'm talking about, but uh, what you're gonna find is you're gonna find some regionality with, uh, with different types of terms and different types of language. So I've always referred to this as a pack sack. That's what it's always kind of called around here. I know in lots of places it's called a backpack. I know in some places you might call it a knapsack. Um, but again, basically it's the same sort of idea. And so if we take a look at this one, uh, you can see it is nice. It does have some, uh, some padded um, straps and they, are, uh, they do have a, a little bit of a mesh material. So they are a little breathable. It's kind of more of a, uh, um, it's kind of like a rubberized kind of spongy type of material. So it is kind of nice and soft on the shoulders. Uh, one of the things that I like is it does have the little um, chest buckle attachment the, to secure it across your chest. So basically keeps the, the straps from trying to slide off your shoulders. That's really great for when I'm doing my biking explorations and you're kind of moving a lot and the, uh, the pack sack has a tendency to want to slide off. Um, it does have another one uh, that can sort of fit around your waist. And then in the back, uh, I did show you the little waterproof compartment or the waterproof cover. And then it does have uh, a number of pouches here in the front. And then when you open it up, on the inside, um, it does have a sort of a secondary front compartment or a, um, a second size front compartment. And there is a, a little mesh part here where you can secure things in there. And there is another pouch. And then on the inside, uh, there is kind of, it's got a bit of a kind of a hardboard back to it. And then there is another pouch in here. So what would I use this for? Um, again, essentially, if I'm doing a hike where I'm kind of close to... Uh, close to civilization. If I'm not venturing too far kind of off the beaten path and I don't really need to carry a ton of stuff with me, um, I would basically use this type of thing. All I would really need to carry in here is I could put a water bottle, but if I'm on my bike, I'm, I'm basically putting the water bottle on my bike. Uh, and then basically I'm, I'm carrying a few other things in here. I might have some, uh, might have some food in here. Um, I might have, um, um, a few extra items of clothing, and then I'm going to be carrying in here um, various things that I need to uh, to record. So I'm probably going to have uh, at least on one part of the hike, I'm going to have my GoPro stored in here. I'm going to have the helmet mount for my GoPro. I'm going to have my extra batteries, and those are going to stay in there all the time. Now, the only inconvenience with the uh, with a setup like this with a pack sack uh, is you're basically going to every time you need to get in here, you're going to have to kind of undo it and sort of whip it off your shoulders, and so that does kind of get a little bit. Kind of tedious at times if you need to get things you have to kind of take it off your back and it's one of the reasons why i eventually when i'm doing kind of my more intensive hikes uh, i wanted a sort of different setup and i want to be able to sort of get to things a little bit more easily and again so this is for me this is something that i'm going to use when i'm not doing anything overly intense but i do need to carry uh, a bit of gear with me okay so i needed to push the camera back a little bit so i have some more space so this would be for me level three hiking. So this is the type of gear that I'm normally wearing when I'm kind of uh, going on my little bit more intense hikes, which is normally what I'm doing. I'm usually in areas that are a bit more kind of isolated, a little bit, little bit more off the beaten path, uh, particularly when I'm doing my railway explorations. And I need to be able to carry uh, a great deal of gear with me, or at least a, you know more than you would fit in something like a backpack or a pack sack. So um, just to give you a little bit of context, a little bit of background on this, I've been sort of hiking, and if you watched our previous episode, I've been hiking for a long time, and I've been doing these explorations for a long time, and uh, one of the things I struggled with is how to carry my gear in a way that it's readily accessible, where I can get to things, where um, if you saw earlier, I mentioned that one of the drawbacks of, of using a pack sack or a backpack is that you constantly have to kind of take it off your back to get into gear, and I found that that was kind of... a you know, rather annoying, um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're trying to reach for things all the time, but you want to keep it a little bit more safe and a little bit more secure. Uh, so what I did uh, was I started kind of falling back on some of my past experiences. And so kind of a little bit of a personal story on me, I'm not going to get into tons of detail. Um, but um, um, I did mention in my in our first episode that I am a high school history teacher. And prior to that, before I decided to get into the teaching field, uh, I had actually planned on having a career in the military. And so to that end, when I was in, a, when I was in high school, I actually joined one of the local Army Reserve units, the, uh, the Lake Superior Scottish Regiment. And so I spent some time in there. And so that 
time in the military kind of influenced me when it came to sort of selecting my gear and deciding on my uh, deciding on the gear that I wanted to uh, to want to use. I really uh, like the idea that you know the 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 military setup where you had access to parts of your gear that were you know very readily accessible, right? So you know when you're military, you're wearing kind of a you know more a tactical kind of setup, and you need access to magazines and and uh, you know certain types of gear. And so for many, many years uh, in my hiking, I tried to kind of emulate that a little bit. Um, and I, it, I really struggled trying to find something that, that kind of met that, that expectation. And it probably wasn't until about 12 or 13 years ago that I actually was able to find something that uh, I thought would work for me. And so what I did was I picked up this piece of equipment here. And so this is a military style tactical vest. Um, and I can't remember where I bought it from because I think this was 2008 when I, uh, when I purchased this and I bought it off the internet. And so I kind of spent a lot of time looking around, uh, for, you know, the right type of, uh, the right type of vest that I was, that I was, that I wanted to use. Uh, again, it was kind of drawing off that military experience and as well, uh, spending a lot of time exploring and as well doing things like taking pictures, photography, and you're always kind of reaching for gear. You you want to, you know, the type of hiking that I was doing, I was kind of getting into kind of more rough and tumble type of areas. You want to make sure that your, your camera gear is protected or your video gear that you're carrying is protected, but you also want to have ready access to it. And so um, basically I came across this uh, this vest. I thought it was really great. Um, if I sort of wing it around here and I show it to you. So on the back, there is a back portion to it and it's kind of a little bit padded and there is basically a two compartment pouch on the back. It does have little loops where you can secure things. And then on the side as well, it does have a uh, little um, basically strap ties on both sides where you can, you can secure things too. On the front, the, uh, the, the, straps kind of come around. So it is almost kind of like a, a pack sack backpack type of thing. They are padded. Uh, so it does provide some comfort. And then there's all kinds of pouches on the front. There's uh, kind of some longer kind of skinnier pouches on the front They're They're secured with Velcro, right? So you can kind of get in and out of them. Um, they are kind of deep. There is a lot of things and finding things inside my my uh, my pouches here uh and then on the sides uh on the sides there's these very large kind of pouches um and then attached to them on the side on the front side there's more storage as well so basically there was a lot of a uh, lot of things that you could uh you could put into this and store into this i'm still finding things as i kind of feel around in here um and so this, uh, again, I got this in 2008 and I used this for many, many years. Uh, the only thing I found and the reason why I'm doing this episode is because I found that I was going to have to replace this uh, after um, all of those years and after all of that hiking that it was starting to wear out. I don't know if you can kind of see on the bottom here. This is on the uh, left hand side. This is one of the pouches here, one of the big pouches. And it's all basically there's a hole in here. Um, it's all becoming frayed because it does kind of tend to rub on things. Uh, it's been beat up a lot. This back pouch here, I actually broke the, uh, actually there's a zipper supposed to be here, it broke. And so uh, I had to replace it with a piece of Velcro. On the front, uh, how it secures closed, there's two, there's two buckles uh, on the front. And what ended up happening was I fell and I ended up breaking um, one of the, uh, the buckles. It actually broke off, I think, way inside here. And thankfully, I have a very, very nice mother who knows how to sew. And so she's the one that attached the Velcro to the back. And she's the one that fixed the, uh, fixed the buckle on the front. So thanks, mom, um, for, uh, for doing all of that. But I figured that it was time to kind of move on. It had done its service. It had seen a lot of miles. And, you know, it was time to, uh, to invest in a newer version, if I could find one, to, uh, to replace this. All right, so when it came time to replace uh, that vest that had served me for many, many years, um, I, again, I couldn't remember where I bought it in the first place because it was 13 years ago. So uh, I ended up going on the internet and I ended up doing some, uh, some searching and, and essentially I did come across kind of the newer version uh, of this vest and I'll show it kind of on me after so you can kind of see it. Um, for the most part, it's very, very similar. Um, I believe it's made by a company called Millspecs. Um, I purchased this one uh, from a place called Forest City Surplus. 
Uh, I believe they're out of Toronto. There is a there is going to be a link in the description so you can take a look at that and essentially look it up. It's not overly expensive. I'm hoping that it serves me as well as the uh, as the other one did. There is a few notable differences. And again, I'm gonna I haven't had a chance to try this out yet because it's not quite hiking season yet. Uh, it's coming soon, uh, but uh, I'll have a little bit better idea of. Um, you know, how it's gonna function compared to the old one. Couple of notable differences. Uh, the first big one is the, um, is the, the, the construction of the, um, of the mesh. The, uh, the old one uh, actually had a much tighter weave on the mesh. This one seems to, uh, basically there's, there's kind of larger size holes. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, it seems um, a little bit um, less rugged to me. I don't know. Uh, again, I'm going to have to try it out and see sort of how it is. And that's kind of everywhere on the back. Maybe it's going to be a little bit more breathable. I do find that when it is very, very warm and I am wearing this uh, because I am carrying at times a bit of weight um, and it is kind of like wearing a vest. Sometimes it, it, it does get a little bit warm. So I don't know if that's going to help with the, uh, with the breathability. The other thing um, that I'm not sh quite sure on yet, I'm going to have to basically try it out and see is on these side pouches. Um, the old version basically had um, the there's a there's a side pouch to these uh, to these big side pouches. There's kind of a um, uh, it's it's off to the side. So on the old version, it was actually on the front side of this. the The problem with this one is it's kind of on the back side, and so I'm gonna. I might find it's it's might be a little bit more less accessible. I don't know. Um, I don't really carry a, a lot in those uh, in those kind of side compartments to the to the side pouch um so again i'll have to see i might sort of uh the only thing i really keep in that one side pouch is sometimes i'll keep uh if i'm bringing some food with me i'll keep it in there um now it's going to be a little less accessible so i might find another spot where i'm going to uh um where i'm going to put it um again i'm going to put this on in a second here and you'll be able to see it so um again the uh the company that manufactures this is uh is mil specs um you can kind of see the label here but Kind of twist it kind of is awkward here so there's the uh there's the label and so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to throw this thing on and basically kind of give you a tour and, and show you how i carry all this gear okay so i have the vest on hopefully can, everybody can hear me okay because i'm not using my microphone i'm a little bit too far away from the uh from the camera to do that so uh again i'll give basically give you a profile of what it kind of looks like when i'm wearing this uh, kind of funny, does look like I'm kind of, it does look like a military type tactical vest. It kind of does look like I'm going off to war. Uh, I have had people kind of make that comment. Were you in the military before? Yeah, long story. Um, anyway, um, so basically I can kind of give you a rundown of essentially what I can carry with me, what I have on me, uh, as I'm doing the hikes. Uh, so I'll basically start at the back. And so you can see that there is the standard pouch, um, and Basically, that's the green part there, and in there, basically, I have all of my kind of first aid gear, anything that I could that I could possibly think of that I could carry with me, um, that I could use if there was some sort of emergency, um, bandages, uh, antiseptic, um, you know, things that could be used as a tourniquet, whatever the the case may be, a uh, little kind of first aid reference guide. Um, I do have in one of the side pouches here. I do have a military style. Um, um, compression bandage um, that uh, that come in very, very handy. But again, most of the medical gear is, is back here. And then attached to it, you'll notice kind of a back pouch. And that actually is a, uh, um, a, um, a zoom bag uh, or a, a carrying case for a camera zoom. Now, I will from time to time kind of put my big zoom lens for my camera in there. Um, oftentimes I'm not using it because I'm not kind of carrying that zoom lens around with me because oftentimes I'm not carrying my SLR camera with me, especially if I'm doing a lot of biking. Um, but I can basically use it to store a whole bunch of other things. Uh, sometimes I'll use it to store kind of um, items of clothing and things like that. So then if we basically take a look at the front side, and so you'll see that there's a series of pouches here on the front. So basically on the ones on the front, uh, this is typically right here where I will carry my, uh, if I um, don't have it attached to my bike, this is where I'll put my phone in. Uh, in this kind of front pocket here. And then here I will also carry uh, documents. Uh, you'll see them I have kind of in a Ziploc bag to kind of keep them uh, safe. So if I have a little piece of map or if I have some documents or things like that that I need to keep with me, I'll keep them in there. Uh, in this side here, sometimes I'll use it to store my, uh, my sunglasses if I need to take them off. 
Uh, and then I have a bunch of other things in here. Uh, in this pocket here, I have this little handy dandy little thing. Um, this is kind of a, I'm not sure what you would call this in Italian, you call this a, a bridula. Uh, this was just basically a carry it because it was something that belonged to my dad. And um, I do a lot of hiking because of my dad, so I kind of carry it with me. Um, you know, just sort of a sentimental reason uh, for him. Uh, and then in the uh, the front pouches, uh, in the front here, a bunch of other stuff. I do have like a multi-tool. Um, I have batteries. I have tons of batteries all over the place in uh, in a lot of these pouches, um, simply because if you're carrying gear like uh, like GPS and things like that, um, you'll always have a need for, uh, for extra batteries. So I do have uh, quite a bit of those in this front pocket here. Um, you can see I have a piece of, uh, looks like a piece of boot lace and I have some, um, trail marking tape and I have, uh, some flavor pouches, uh, for water. And then the side pouches here, uh, so these ones here, this is basically if, uh, if I'm on my bike, usually I'm carrying the water uh, on my bike, but sometimes I'll also carry it on myself and then especially if I'm walking. So what I use in these pouches here is basically a combination of things. So these are the military style canteens. They're not the greatest thing, but like I said, when they're walking, they're kind of handy. Uh, they fit into the nice little kind of um, canteen carrier thing. It kind of keeps them um, kind of, especially if you've got some frozen water in there, it'll kind of keep it kind of cool. And so I can carry up to two, I can carry one on the uh, one on the other side. And again, I do have the little carrier for the, uh, for the canteen. And then on the sides here, so this pouch here, uh, basically where I will carry my, um, I'll carry my, Gro my GoPro in there. So when it's not attached to my head, because um, typically when I do my hikes, um, I will bike um, usually in the um, direction I want to get to. So typically I will go um, east uh, and then I'll come back kind of west. And so when I'm going east, I don't have the camera mounted on my head. I will typically have it stowed. So I will have it stowed in this little compartment. It's really easy to get to, right? So I just kind of wing around and pull it out. And then over here as well, kind of tucked away, is it's always important to carry with you some, some good tools. So this is a knife. So this is a U.S. Marine Corps K-Bar knife. And so I purchased my first K-Bar when, uh, when I was in the military. And that served me for many, many years. And this is kind of a, a newer version. Um, just finished uh, sharpening up. It's uh, it's very sharp. Uh, it's nice. It does have a little serrated uh, edge here on the blade, so it's kind of handy for uh, for doing a few things other than uh, what you would need the uh, the blade for. And so it comes in a nice kind of hard little carrying pouch. And I always have that kind of with me. Again, you'll never know when you um, have an emergency or you need uh, the use of a knife. And then on the other side, on my left-hand side, uh, basically what I can do is I can have, uh, I do have a pouch right here. And so this is what I will do is I'll carry, uh, I think this year, this is new, I just put this on here. Um, basically, I'm gonna be carrying probably my batteries for my GoPro uh, and things like that in there. Uh, I can mount uh, things like a shovel. So when I am doing sometimes explorations and you do need to do a little bit of archeology span work and you kind of need to dig a little bit or scrape some things away, I can cold hold. So this is a uh, folding shovel, so I can keep that in there. And then the last piece, um, again, I don't carry this with me all the time because what I found is when I'm doing the biking, it gets in the way. Um, but if I am walking and I do need my SLR camera, again, the big thing is trying to protect your gear. And if you have an SLR camera, usually it's worth a lot of money and you want to make sure that's protected. So I have this little uh, bag. This is a low pro. Um, so this is, uh, that makes, uh, typically a low pro makes, um, camera storage gear. And so what I do is basically this will fit my SLR camera, including with the, uh, with the grip on the bottom. Um, I do have a bunch of other things I can fit. There's a pouch inside here. I can put things like filters and stuff. Uh, but I found what it's really great is if I take this, undo this front buckle, uh, on the vest, and then if I feed it through the back belt loop on the, the bag, and then I rebuckle it. And then if I tighten it up a little bit, so basically what'll happen is, I don't have my SLR with me right now, but essentially it will sit right up on the front here. So right where it's handy. And so that way I can basically 
keep it in here and, and especially if I'm taking a lot of pictures sometimes I'll just keep it open and it like and it'll sit perfectly right in here and it's just perfect access I can get it out take a picture put it back in zip it back up and so that way if I'm going through any um, you know um, sort of dense brush or things like that the uh, the the SLR camera is going to be protected I'm not going to worry about it getting dinged up or getting dirty or things like that uh, I've actually had my camera in this thing and I've actually dropped you know, when I'm going to attach it, there's been a couple times where it's slipped and it's fallen and it's been very protected inside this, uh, inside this camera case. So, uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is kind of my particular setup. And this is what I kind of use when I'm in those more kind of off the beaten path type of places. Um, one thing I didn't mention here, I didn't bring one with me, but when I have my GPS, uh, I will hook my GPS, the lanyard of my GPS onto one of these little front straps. And then I have, uh, this little uh, attachment here, this is kind of a belt attachment. So I'll have my GPS and I'll click it in here. And so that way my GPS is always handy and there's a quick release button. So I just pop it out and then I have my GPS right in my hand and that way I can carry it where it's kind of out of the way, but it's still at the front, it's still getting good um, satellite coverage. So again, um, that is uh, this episode about load bearing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Again, this is the setup that I use. Um, if you have any questions, uh, don't be afraid to reach out to me. Uh, my website uh, address is at the end of this video. I'm also on social media, so you can check me out on things like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So thanks for tuning in today. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes. If you have any ideas of things that I should be taking a look at or things that I should be talking about in future episodes, uh, leave them in the comments or reach out to me and just give me a shout. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. So thanks for tuning everyone. See you later.